Hi there. I was just going to quickly run through how to use Move because obviously if you're like me the first time you come across it trying to get it to work and align genomes uh, can be tricky if you're not putting the right file types in. So I'll just quickly talk about that. So the best thing to do if you're going to align some genomes okay um, you want to align against a reference genome so we'll try this with uh, Niceria subflava so if I go into the NCBI database type in Niceria subflava scroll down the page see under genome click on genome and then it will tell you here genome assembly and annotation report 15 so if you click on that one now as you look down here you have this column here that says level so as you can see on on this fully filled in circle it says complete uh, on the one below it's in contigs so you might get different levels of assembly for these but we're going to select one of these reference genomes. So in this case, Niceria subflava M18660. So if I click on where it says strain, it says linked genome. Click on that one. And then scroll down the page. And at the bottom you've got some options here where you can have it in graphic format, faster or GemBank. So I'm going to select GemBank. You need GemBank because when you open MOVE you want the annotations to be present okay to compare against the genome that you're going to be comparing it against okay so just have a look down all right so at the top here okay you see Niceria subflava strain M18660 chromosome complete genome so to save that file go to save to then select file and you've got a drop down menu it says GemBank but the best one to use is GemBank full then create file ok and you save that ok so then you'll need to actually access MOVE so if you don't know where it is um, you can type in MOVE MOVE Genome Alignment say for example okay have a look down and this is the Darling lab here so it's MOVE the Darling bit of information there but then if you want to download it obviously you can do download MOVE okay and then select the one that's suitable for you so I've got a version suitable for Windows which I've already downloaded okay so I'll open up MOVE okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to align a genome that's just in contig form okay against um, the reference genome that I've just downloaded so if you go once MOVE is opened, go on File, Align with Progressive MOVE, then Add Sequence, OK, wherever you saved your genome to, so I saved it in here, so as you can see here, subflava m18660.gb, so GemBank file, so just select your GemBank file first, then Add Sequence, and then this one here, Niceria subflava and then the strain, that's in contig form. So click that one. Okay, so that's now got your two files in. You'll need to select an output folder for this. Okay, so I'll just put it on the desktop for now. And then you want um, to rename it something. so you can identify it later so I've just used the last few digits that um, genome in contig form and then um, the strain of uh, this one here the reference genome and then save 
When you've done that, you press align. All right. Now, hopefully, as long as there's no errors, you'll see um, this box appear here. Okay, and this will start running through the sequence of alignments. Um, so, it's, as you can see, it's just going through that. All right. So that's fine. So when that's completed, what you'll see is your genome's aligned, and I'll bring one up. So depending on how many genomes you're aligning, it can take obviously slightly different amounts of time. So once the alignment's complete, it'll look a bit like this. Okay, so along the top here you see you've got Neisseria subflava M18660, that's your reference genome. Along the bottom Neisseria subflava and then obviously the strain. Now you can see as I move this cursor along, okay you can see it's highlighting different parts of the lower genome. Now when you see the cursor moving in that direction along the top and um, it's going in the opposite direction along the bottom. It might depend on how it's been sequenced, so it might have sequenced the opposite strand. So it doesn't mean necessarily that this piece is inverted, okay, in relation to that top piece. So as you scroll through, um, you can select a part of the genome and align those two regions. So just to show you, this is one contig, this is another contig, and it's just arranged it in. Um, the context for the lower genome 198 in numerical order. So just look down at the bottom of the page at this number here, POXM, and you see it said 1.1 there. So it says the chromosomal contig name. Okay, so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, all the way up. So this isn't actually in the correct order because it's unassembled. But you can zoom in. Okay, so if you want to look at this region here, you click on that it will align that region okay so then if you go up and you can zoom in to a particular part you can see in the annotation above okay um, it's got the name of the gene um, you can see there's a, a repeat region here and so on and by doing this you can actually identify areas where there might be differences so you can see here in the top genome you've got a cluster of genes that doesn't appear to be present in the lower genome. All right, so that's just one thing you can do. So the other option is you can search the the reference genome. So if you go on this binocular, find an annotation feature, and then if you go into product and you say, for example, you, you know the name of a gene or something similar, Pillus, say for example, search. Now you can see it's brought up um, annotations that might have, be associated with PILUS there. So PIL B there, this one here, okay, PIL C according to the annotation, okay, and so on. So you can just look for the presence or absence of genes and uh, that way, okay. So that's one thing that you can do with uh, with MOVE. Um, obviously, like I said, the the lower representation isn't aligned um, to the top one. So there's one other thing you can do with this, okay, and that's you can align the context to the reference genome. And I know when we were trying to identify species um, previously, we did it partly through MOVE. So you can see how well your contiguous sequences align to the reference genome. So if you go into Tools, move contigs so it's going to move the contigs from the um, partly assembled genome to match this top genome okay so then if you go to your this is choose the location to keep the output files okay so that's the first thing you want to do is select um, a place to save the files to select ok so that it will start reordering the contigs when you press start okay so that's fine First thing you want to do is to add in the reference sequence. Again, so go to the reference sequence. So in this case, it was uh, no serious subflava M18660. Put it in the reference sequence. Then add in your context. Okay, 
so that's the incomplete genome there which is 198 so you open that okay so you know where you're saving it your genome complete genome is first and your contacts are second okay then you press start all right so just hold on a sec just check that working yeah so as you can see here it's doing um the reordering iterations all right so that's fine now we, we won't wait for that to complete because I did one previously all right once that's done what you'll see is you have it's gone through two reordering iterations okay so select the most recent one okay and you'll end up with something that looks like this okay so basically this is your top genome again M18660 these are your contacts but in this case it's reordered them okay to match um, the reference genome all right so you can see here previously we started at quantic one and then it went two three four and so on now if you look at the lower region here so the quantic or um, name okay you can see obviously the order has changed now and it's done that to match um, your reference genome now if you look at this region here okay see where the cursor is at that end there okay and then it goes back over here yeah it's a circular genome so this end here will then go around to this end here if you see what I mean because it's it's circular okay so that's fine so that's how you can reorder the contigs and then by doing this as well you can see in this particular region here um, obviously there's some region of difference when you've done that similarly here it's a bit easier to see some of these features then <coughs> going maybe here but it could be due to quantic boundaries all right so that's how to compare you just compare two fairly similar genomes so you can see that the subflava or what you think is subflava is aligned quite well to the reference genome for the Neisseria subflava if you compare that say um, <coughs> If you move the contigs for an incomplete genome that isn't similar to your reference genome, you'll get something that looks a bit different. So I'll just open one up now so you can see. I'll go. What I did was I aligned the reference genome against Neisseria mucosa contigs. Okay, and you can see that the number of iterations it took to actually align those was um, significantly more. But it, it, that could be reflected in the actual number of contacts. So what I'll do is I'll open up the alignment for that. Okay, you can see here it looks actually completely different. It's a bit of a mess there, isn't it? So um, you can take off um, some of the connecting lines just to have a look a bit clearer and if you zoom in all right you can see while the genes might be fairly similar in there they're obviously in you know there's been a lot of reordering and so on um, so just visually you could see that there's a difference or well the what the alignment for the nice area is more similar you could say just looking at it the alignment for the mucosa so obviously you know you can draw a conclusion from that but that's obviously just a quick introduction to one of the things well two of the things you can do with Mo so the first thing you need is a reference genome in GenBank format okay you need to then your contiguous sequences for your genome that you sequenced your incomplete genome um, you can then align them with progressive Mo okay <coughs> or you can go into the move contigs function uh, and then realign the contiguous sequences for your incomplete genome to a reference genome just to see what those look like all right there's a search function as well where you can look for um, specific genes in there or features um, and there are possibly other things as well you can do obviously depending on you know how ambitious you feel so i hope that's helped that's just a quick introduction to get started with mo because i think one of the sticking points is being able to get it to 
uh, run at all. So knowing the correct file types to actually input into it. So I hope that's helped. Okay, so yeah, good luck with that.